Let's make sense of all these headlines with Fred Kemp. He's president and CEO of the Atlantic Council. Let's start with Musk. Fred, why not? Uh, geopolitics are now the order of the day for him, I guess. Yeah, so uh, it's uh, rainy, it's gridlocked in New York. It must be the UN General Assembly. But for all the heads of state you have around here, everyone seems to want to meet with Elon Musk. You know, he's got six uh, gigafactories, four in the U.S., uh, one in Germany, um, and, uh, and one in China, and, and he's looking at Mexico. So he talked to Erdogan. Erdogan would like to have one of these. You've got the French, the Spanish, and the Italians talking to him. India may, be, may figure in this. Um, but uh, Turkey's really interesting because it's had a 100-year history with Ford. It manufactures, has a big population itself. It's, it's used to automobile manufacturing. It can ship to third countries. Uh, so that could have some, that, that these talks could have some legs. So we also had the report, uh, you know, that uh, there was supposed to be this big defense deal between Saudi Arabia and Raytheon or RTX now uh, to kind of build this big, uh, um, I guess what you call missile defense system uh, for them. And then that fell apart at the last minute over sanctions. I guess my question is, where should the U.S., not that he's going to ask them, want Musk to build these factories? And, and where, where would it not uh, like to see this kind of investment? Well, I, I, I'm not sure Elon Musk listens to anybody about where he should build the factories. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, we, it's always, we, we talk a lot about friend shoring. It's always great when we have this kind of setup with uh, like minded countries or countries that we really want on our side. So that would, be, uh, that, that would be a really good outcome. In terms of Saudi Arabia, one of the things people aren't going to be talking about much this week is the whole prospect of uh, uh, normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now, that could be a huge breakthrough. And if you look at Saudi Arabia in that context, that could be one of the biggest foreign policy breakthroughs of the entire Biden administration. So that, that could play a role as well. Yeah, I'm just looking for a breakthrough that might get oil prices down, uh, because that might be very much needed right now. So I'm curious how this all aligns. Uh, by the way, for those who are interested, Kathy Wood will be on Fast Money tonight, uh, maybe talking about Tesla and, and many other topics. Uh, you can catch that there around 5.30 p.m. Let me play for you uh, what else we heard this weekend, as we saw, and, and Tyler mentioned this in his news update, a record number of Chinese planes in the Taiwanese area, more than 100, uh, you know, close to the island. Former President Donald Trump was on Meet the Press yesterday where he refused to say whether or not he would provide military support to Taiwan against an invasion from China. Take a quick listen. I won't say, uh, because if I said I'm giving away, you know, only stupid people are going to give that. I heard the other day De Sanctimonious said something about he was going to do this or he was going to do that. I say, well, why is he saying the strategy? You can't say that. So when you ask me that question, I would never say that because... You give away all your options. But you don't take it off the table. I don't take anything off okay. the table. Fred, what was your reaction to that? Well, look, we're at the beginning of an era of tension uh, with China. Uh, it has a slowing economy, so that's going to take some of its resources, unless they fix the, uh, the state control of the economy and the party's leadership, which I don't think is going to happen. That's going to be the case. But on the other hand, it's building up its military. Its, uh, it's uh, ambitions are growing around the globe. And so what we need to do is a steady set of messaging to China and to our allies about China. And in the 2024 elections, uh, it could be anything but steady in that respect. And I think the, the, the Chinese can only smile a little bit when they see the messiness of our domestic politics. Uh, and, um, and I think President Trump is just playing true to form. But what's really to be watched is will their autocratic system get its act together to run its economy or will our democracy get its act together in 2024 to be steadier in, in messaging who we are around the, the global stage? Yeah, some of those changes lately with Chinese military leadership certainly raised eyebrows about, uh, you know, just what is going on there in those ranks as they maybe prepare for, for more of an incursion. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, and the, defense, the, the fact that we've got a defense minister missing, and before that, you had a foreign minister who was removed and a couple of generals on top of that. So there is some instability inside of uh, China, for sure. It's so opaque that we really don't know what impact it's going to have in the end. But it does not help President Xi Jinping that his economy is slowing so much faster than one had anticipated. So there's a lot going on in, in, in that country. Uh, and sometimes we can't really influence that. What we can influence is what we do. So we have to be steady on with our alliances. We have to be steady with Ukraine. We have to take the commanding heights of technology. And most of all, we have to make our democracy work. That we can control. What we can't control is what's up and down in China. Sure.